Good evening, everyone. We're going to get Hi. we're going to get started. Some of you have come late, but these are two of my friends, two Irish lads that uh, hey, happen to be yes. keen honest. keen on drinking. So, uh, so I'm still letting people into the room. There's loads of people. It's been quite successful, my social media <laughs> activities and emails over the last few days. Now, I think um, we're, we're very, very lucky to be able to go live to the Conrad Hilton Hotel in Dublin, Ireland, and meet uh, Luca, who is the... Uh, what is your title, Luca? You're the... Can you hear Master us? of Disaster. Master of Disaster. <laughs> yeah. Luca is, uh, works on the... Hi, hey, everyone. And... Hi, Luca. Good evening, everybody. Hi. And welcome Hi. to the corner of Dublin. So we finally, you know, we are, tonight we are here to do a nice uh, masterclass for you. And uh, Shane, our bartender, you know, will basically lead you through the Irish flavors. Finally, you know, we, we have a date for your conference, which is booked for 2022 from the 13th to the 15th of July. So we are all very excited here in Dublin to, to host this event. It is a great opportunity for us to showcase um, Ireland to you, to all our American friends. So uh, tonight, Basically, I will be the only guest of this bar, so I will enjoy all the cocktails, cocktails that Shane will, uh, will do for you. And obviously, I would like to see some of your skills as well, because I know that you will all be able to drink when you come over. But now I want to see if you are able to prepare a cocktail together with Shane. So um, I don't take any more time from Shane, please. I'm calling the star of the evening. So... Enjoy your evening, and we will be here together. Bye. 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 Good evening, everybody. Can you everyone hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. So what I'm going to do this evening, or this afternoon for many of you, uh, I'm going to go through some of my favorite drinks from Ireland. So obviously, I'm going to start with an Irish coffee, which is one of the best drinks ever made. Um, now, the most important thing with an Irish coffee that a lot of people overlook is that it's all about, you need the best ingredients at the start. It's the same when you're cooking any food or making any type of drink. If you have the best coffee, the best whiskey, and the best cream, that's a combination because all the flavors work really, really well together. I'm gonna to talk a little bit about Irish whiskey as well, um, because there's so many different types of Irish whiskey that a lot of people aren't familiar with. So Jemison is obviously the most popular one, that's a blended whiskey, but I'm gonna to talk to you about single pop whiskey, single malt whiskey and the flavor differentiations between them and i'm also going to talk about pucheen as well pucheen is something that's uniquely irish uh, it's recognized by the eu as an important part of irish culture as well uh, it's equivalent to irish moonshine but i'll talk about that a little bit later so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to start in the irish coffee and then i believe many of you are going to try and make an irish coffee after if you don't it's fine there'll be plenty of brilliant irish coffees waiting for you here in your conference next july but if you have any questions at all or if you want to take any notes, or if you want to know how to make an Irish coffee home, this is how I personally do it myself. Um, but don't be afraid to ask any questions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through with the Irish coffee. I'm gonna do it slowly. I'm gonna speak as clearly as I can. And then if there's any questions at the end, then we'll go through it and then we'll help whoever in between. So the first thing you need to do is you need a glass that's sustainable for boiling water because you need to heat up the glass. It's most important. Um, the so what many wine glasses will break so that's we really have to remember that so you need a glass that can take boiling water so you want to get that glass nice and warm so if you have a uh, boiling water there and a kettle on now would be the time to get the kettle on and fill it with boiling water now how i do the irish coffee so originally you would heat up the glass uh, i do it a little bit different so the best way i find is if you get a brown sugar cube and if you have any overproof whiskey, uh, I'm actually going to use stag bourbon. Um, so the way that happens is you can caramelize the sugar. So you get a really, really nice sweet flavor off the sugar and it warms up the glass at the same time. If you're doing this at home, what you do is just warm up the glass, leave it for a minute, get rid of the water, and then, pour the, then put the sugar and the coffee in first. But I'm just going to heat up the glass first. 
Ah, a blowtorch. A blowtorch. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, so I don't know if you can see in the camera here, but the you'll see the flames there. So what's that doing is now that's caramelizing the whiskey and warming up the glass at the same time. So what that's doing, I'm just going to get my fresh shot of espresso if I can one more. But doesn't the, the whiskey lose its alcohol then? We'll have, we'll have to wait for Sean's chain to come back. That, that, that is true. So Plenty when more alcohol. you do set fire to any alcohol, it does, burn, it does burn off the alcohol. Uh, however, I'm only using the, I only used five milliliters of this overproof bourbon just to give it some fire and flames, just because obviously normal whiskey, the alcohol content is normally around 40, 45%, and it's just not high enough for um, the sugar to catch fire. So that's why I'm using the overproof bourbon, just to give it, um, it's, uh, what's the right word here? Just to set it on fire, basically. I need something flammable. And because the alcohol content of this whiskey is 70%, that's what does it. So... And you see the orange flame, you know, that's good because that's the sugar there is interacting. Mm. Now I have my fresh espresso here as well. And I also have some boiling water to the side to top it up as well. So you can see, I don't know if you can see the sugars caramelized to the side of the glass there. That's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what we want. Thank you, Mike. That's exactly what we want. Thank I don't know. If, okay, I'm going to throw it out. Um, Luke, Luke has got a camera on him that is, is better than the camera in front of. Yeah. He's... Yeah. So, as you can see there, I've thrown out the whiskey. And you can see all that lovely caramelized sugar stuck to the glass. That lovely dynamic to the drink. Yeah. Now, when you're making any sort of a cocktail, you should always start with the cheapest ingredient first. And the reason that is, if you put in the whiskey first and then you make a mistake later on, for example, there's nothing, you can't take that whiskey back. So that's why you should always start with the cheapest ingredients first. So we have to, I'm gonna put coffee in here now, freshly brewed. Yep. We're gonna give that a stir up because we want that sugar and the coffee to get fully mixed, fully diluted. We don't want any lumps of sugar. We don't want um, more coffee than sugar in certain places. We want a good mix. Another reason you want to add the coffee last is also because when you add the whiskey at the start and then the coffee on top, because there is more coffee and water, you can lose an awful lot of the whiskey in the drink. And next thing, when you get to the very end of the drink, you've basically got a shot of coffee or a shot of whiskey. And that can't always be pleasant sometimes. So now that's lovely and warm. Going to put in a bit more boiling water. Now, the whiskey I'm going to use for the Irish coffee is a single pot whiskey. A single pot whiskey is called such because with a Jemison is a blended whiskey, it's a mixture of a couple of different aged whiskeys that have been sitting there. However, a single pot whiskey is a type of whiskey that has only gone through the same pot, triple distilled. So you get a really complex type of flavor. And um, the most famous single pot whiskey would be Powers. Um, Powers is a, was a distillery in Dublin. It closed down in 1975 and the name of that distillery was John's Lane. After 1975, the four big surviving whiskey distilleries all combined to form one company down in Cork. Uh, the whiskey I'm going to use is actually a, a whiskey that came out a couple of years ago called Powers John's Lane. It's a 12 year old single pot whiskey and it's one of my favorite whiskeys. 
So the key characteristic of a single pot is Irish whiskey is known for being smooth with a bit of a bite. Single pot whiskey carries in uh, almost a level of like spiciness and texture. Believe it or not. Mm-hmm. They put on me in the um, Luca, sorry, I, I, uh, uh, Shane, Shane, can you just unmute yourself? That's it. I've got everyone on mute. There we go. Thank you. Sorry, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. You're everyone's on mute now. Thank you. Carry on. Yeah, sorry. I ended up muted for some reason. Someone's trying to keep me quiet. That's right. Um, So I don't. uh, So I was talking about single pot whiskey uh, and why it's so different from regular whiskey, and it carries a a, a spiciness. And it's one I love it because it's it's a whiskey that really develops in the tongue. So if you have a glass of single pot whiskey, it tastes different from the start to the finish, and that's what I love about it. It's a really complicated type of whiskey, and it really develops well, and it works brilliantly in Irish coffees because the sweetness of the sugar that we're after caramelize, and then you have the bitterness and the roastedness of the coffee. That's why the single pot whiskey just binds it really, really well together. So that's why I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use the Powers John's Lane 12 year old. You want about 50 milliliters of whiskey to a double shot of espresso, and then you just want as much water to kind of fill up the glass. You can see I do have a quite petite glass. It is a small enough glass. You don't want a big cup. You don't want a big mug. You want, you want to taste the whiskey. You want to taste the coffee. You don't want to water down. So. Now, so that's the 50 milliliters of whiskey. And then we're just going to start out up there. Now, I'm going to start on my cream now. Normally, I prepared if someone orders an Irish coffee in the bar, I can move a lot quicker, but I just want to show you every stage from step to step so you can understand exactly. Uh, so this is just regular fresh Irish cream. You can't beat it. Now in the whiskey, or in the cream, sorry, I'm actually going to put in a bit of sugar. And then I'm also going to use a bit of whiskey. And you can use Jemison for this because we're only going to put in about five or ten milliliters into what's 100 milliliters of cream. The whiskey for the cream doesn't matter too much. Just don't use scotch. That's all. Now, um, if you're doing this at home, um, obviously it's a lot easier in a cocktail shaker. But any sort of container that closes anything at all so I mean if you have a cocktail shaker if you ha- if you'd make smoothies at home anything with a lid yeah Matthew's on the ball there now he's, he's got better equipment than me by the looks of it <laughs> so I'm just going to shake this up get it nice and whipped you're not the first person to tell me that no <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, you've got all the toys, none of the action. That's the problem. Uh, so, yeah, I'm after getting some lovely cream here now. Now, what you want to do is you want to just pour it slowly on top of the drink with a hot spoon because you want the cream to really sit on the drink. Nice and gently. Now, some people like to garnish their Irish coffees with uh, chocolate sprinkles. Uh, personally, I don't like it because I do find it is sweet enough as it is. Um, it can work well with nutmeg, with cinnamon, with those kind of winter spices, but I just like the classic. And uh, now, if you do want a little coffee bean on top, right in the middle so then every time you take a drink you get the smell of a fresh coffee bean and it just ties everything together so that is my irish coffee
No, uh, Luke here be the judge now. He's the he's the the director of operations, so he gets to sample this, and he can be the the critique. Now, so there's, I'm just going to check the chat to see if there's anyone typing any questions. Okay, uh, doesn't I can't seem to see anything there. Does anyone have any questions about? What I've done is, so far, or is there a different way? Voices? If you don't have, if you don't have a torch, how do you light the, uh, how do you light the the bourbon that you initially lit up? Could you do it with um, a match or something else? Matches, matches, matches. Yeah, matches would be best. You could use a lighter, but sometimes when you tilt it and light it, sometimes the flames can shoot out. So the matches just does give that little bit of degree of separation from you and the fire. Thank you. No problem at all, kind of, Mr. Salzman, sorry. <laughs> well, it's something to look forward to for your trip here. Okay. There's everybody. Is it one last question? Can we have you make us one of those, Luca, next yeah. summer? If I could ask, is it essential to use brown sugar or can you use white sugar? Uh, I would say it's essential to use brown sugar because okay. white sugar, white sugar is too sweet. That uh, that refined processed cane sugar, it 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 takes too much away from the drink. Um, okay. whereas brown sugar, brown sugar is a more mellow sweetness, um, okay. and it's, it's it, it can add a little bit more consistency. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I would say it's essentially use brown sugar. Some people do use white sugar, but uh, I find it too sweet, especially when I do sweeten the cream with white sugar already. Yeah. Um, when, when, when you get to the stage... Generally, yeah, no, I'd, I'd stick to brown. When possible, obviously. I've made them with white sugar when I don't have any browning. That's fine, but I'd prefer brown myself. Now, can, you put, can you put your hand up if you are making these uh, at home, in your office, wherever you are? Okay. Who is doing? Who is doing this? We need some uh, competitors here. We are doing three here. I don't know if you can see, but I've got fire on my uh, dining room table. <laughs> Matt, Matthew, will Conrad be there uh, next well, uh, summer? So for the if anyone's making a Irish coffee, I will definitely judge them, and we can see who wins. All right. Okay. And there's my version. Michael Top, are you making uh, some Irish coffee there? <laughs> I'm not. Oh, right that's, that's a nice oh, one there right. now, James. That's uh, the Irish got there. Well, I did use one ingredient that I have. <laughs> <laughs> and I advise keep drinking it. <laughs> Cheers. I'm with you. I'm doing the same. <laughs> All I had was the coffee. I skipped that. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I cannot have the coffee at this time. It's too late. <laughs> Conrad, do you know why the Irish created whiskey? Sorry, I think not your screen. I think you might have put in too much whiskey trying to set on fire there. You might be waiting a while, but it should be okay. Just, can you see us doing it? Which yeah. one? Is it? We use different doses for each one. Why don't you make coffee just, uh, <laughs> just one more? Yeah, yeah. It's decaffeinated as well. Oh, decaffeinated. Well, it's too late. It's 10 o'clock, 10 30 at night here. And it's alcohol free whiskey. No, no, no. It's oh, not. No, 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 no. It's, it's definitely not. Uh, we've gone for the very finest whiskey here, um, but not according to James. It's 58%. Is that right? 58%? Is that what it says? Matthew's got a version of Irish whiskey. It's like me saying that I've picked up Swiss snow in the front garden. <laughs> anyway. Well, he told me the other day how much he paid for it. So it must be like Swiss snow, which is gold lined. Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you use decaf coffee. Yeah, I, I, I like the idea. It's, it's a decaf coffee, but normal alcohol and whipped cream. So I'm having trouble here and here. You save a lot. You save a lot. I, I, I'm with Master here just on a single ingredient. It's good. <laughs> Can't hear. Anything. 
Right. Actually, I've I got wish I could have taken the time to get the ingredients, but I'm going low tech. Um, McDonald's. Oh my God, I'm on. Coffee with that. Cheers, Paul. I like Cheers. I actually I've got two Cheers. ingredients because I've got whiskey and I've got water in it too. So anyway. Oh, <laughs> oh you, you cannot put water in the whiskey. Oh no, you must. You must cut it just with a little water. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, brings out the flavor. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Can just we a hear splash. this from Dublin? This is from Dublin. This is this is <laughs> absolutely just a no, a I splash. meant from the old man knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I have to grab some cut. Uh, oh yeah, water. right. So I'm going to make the cream. I've got the finest organic um, <laughs> double cream. It goes in there, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Oh my God. Is that enough? It's like the That's episode it. of the three yeah. stages. <laughs> how, many, how many scoops? Matthew, don't you normally have one that you prepared earlier? Is that <laughs> the way it works? Uh, well, I can't. I can't. I've been working so hard today, boy. It's been there. I haven't had time to make Irish coffees and things. <laughs> right. A bit of whiskey. Yeah. Hey, hey, Paul Danks. What are the odds? What are the odds in You're London that up. Matthew lights his <laughs> hair on fire? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> It's one way that they want to know. Didn't that happen to Michael Jackson, Jackson filming a video once? Sorry, Machu, can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, Aaron. right, we're going in with the coffee. Can you <laughs> Come on, Matthew, you're yeah, supposed to be talking us through it. Oh, no. 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 Oh, no. All right. right, we're just putting, we're adding the coffee now to the uh, sugar heated mixture. Okay, we'll do, we'll do another one. Just twist around. I can see from here that it, this is the caffeine coffee. Twist around? Yeah. You reckon? It's too, uh, mix up the sugar first. Just too, uh, a bit too much cream. But also interesting, you need three people to mix one oh, we've, got three. Wait, we've got three coffees. <laughs> we've got three. <laughs> That's Europe for you. Now I know why it's so expensive. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's only one reason. Only one uh, reason. No, Tobias, this is three French-based yeah. people to make an Irish coffee. Yes. <laughs> Disaster. Come hey, on, so to, um, we mix anything together. Who else is making for, these Irish coffees? Then we send up the price and we still have fun. Hey, hey so to, to, to uh, Patrick's question, is, uh, is Colin uh, McGregor's whiskey any good? I've never, I've never tried it, Mark. I don't know. No, no, Mark. Don't bother. Have you? No. <laughs> It'll make you very Paul, aggressive. Paul, Paul McDowell, uh, I, would uh, call you I could use that. I could use that. For, My wife would love that. <laughs> what? Sorry, Paul Danks. What was the question? No, it wasn't. It was somebody else. Okay. It was me. Sorry, sorry, Paul. It was Ian here. I was just wondering, have you never had it when you've been around at Colin uh, McGregor's, uh, Conor McGregor's house for a little candle expiry? You no. Know? <laughs> I'm afraid not. No. <laughs> um, we we only have an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we get the price for effort. I don't know Sh Shane, Shane, do you want to move on to the next one, please? Oh, no, hang on, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> We've nearly finished. We've nearly finished. It's like an ice cream sundae. This is like an aberration <laughs> for an Irishman watching this. <laughs> a beer and a whiskey yeah. so far. And I, I'm going to be tipped over by uh, this. Is over. <laughs> Matthew, did you get an early start? Everyone seems to be having today. a lot of fun with the Irish coffees. <laughs> I'm on East Coast time. Right, who is yeah, I'm channel? having a... Who Another had, drink. Apart from my lads here, has anyone else made an Irish coffee whilst... Um... No. Yeah. I started before you, Matthew, when I finished already. Finnegan's. Uh... <laughs> okay. Well, you've consumed it, but you can't be judged, can you? That's the <laughs> Was there any... Oh, I've always been judged, Matthew. I've always been judged. Well, uh, all I can see is match match you and his... his Friends making a big mess. <laughs> it doesn't look what a bad. mess. <laughs> hey, Mark, yeah. are you having one of these? 
Hey, Mark. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to I'm going to move on to the old. Important thing is not what it looks like. Move on to the old fashioned. What are you saying, Dennis? I'm going to move. Are you having one of these, Mark? Uh, I'm having one with a rock. That's it. Okay. It works. Good job, guys. A lot of fun. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Matthew, guys. I'm like I'm like you, Mark. It took too long to brew the coffee. This can't too much. Absolutely. Cheers, guys. Hey, Matthew, I'm on the center. Fuck you. We've done a classic. <laughs> we forgot to add the whiskey. We forgot oh, to add the oh, Irish. God. I remember everything. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should have taken the ads and instead of the oh, zero. Oh, we forgot to add the whiskey. <laughs> is, it too, is it too late to add the whiskey now? <laughs> No, we're going to go on to the next cocktail. That's what the bartender just said. Yeah, it saves Luke, never Luke to make for this. You can watch you to shut us up, Matthew. So funny. Matthew's going to come to me. Go over, Garth. Okay. Um, I'm going to put you all back on mute. <laughs> uh, so, Shane, you'll have to unmute your computer. Okay. Shane? Can you hear us, Shane? Shane? Another Irish. He's frozen. Is he there? Let's see. Maybe you should name him Mr. Conrad Dublin. We seem to have lost him. Uh, that's the. <laughs> I asked him to clean the computer. Maybe he's. Um, he's, he's done something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That was so classic. funny. I can't <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, it's a classic. It's a classic. Nope. That was your job. <laughs> yeah. Um, are you there? Hello? Hi, can you hear me now? Can you? Yes, we can hear you now. Perfect. Okay. okay. And Lucas, right. where is he? All right, we, we had slight technical issues there. Okay. We had, we had slight technical issues there. All right. Actually, so, uh, Luca's phone is, is much better. You, his mobile is, is very good. Yeah, I that's what I'd say. So we might just uh, move to Luca's phone. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. So, yeah, oh, I can't really see anyone now, so I'm flying blind. So I, I, I need you to communicate to me now. That's if all right. I, you can't hear or see anything. That's all right. Okay. Sorry. No, so I'm going to do the, uh, the old fashioned now. So, with the old fashioned, what you want to do is get a good, nice, proper glass and you want to have it chilled. So, if you have a glass in the fridge, uh, brilliant. If not, just a bit of ice in the glass, get it nice and cool. Let's do three of these, please, guys. Four glasses, There's loads of ice. Now, I have a nice mixing glass here. If you don't have a mixing glass, a, a pint glass can work. A cocktail shaker can work. Yeah. But you're better off with a proper mixing glass because it stops the dilution um, more effectively so you get a nice even balance. So in the mixing glass, I'm going to just do one dash of Angostura bitters and one dash of orange bitters. So one of each. Some people like two of Angostura, two of orange. Um, I prefer one of each because the orange adds a nice bit of freshness, goes well with the garnish, uh, but too much of it can be too sweet and change the dynamic of the drink. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use 10, 10 milliliters of sugar syrup. Now, you can put in a sugar cube and crush it up and muddle it up. Um, I just prefer sugar syrup myself because I think it provides more consistency and texture to the drink. But again, it's whatever you're more comfortable doing, but this is just me, how I personally prepare it. So you just get a much nicer balance to it. So, so one to one sugar syrup, you don't want it too sweet. Um, now for the whiskey, uh, if you use a cast strength Irish whiskey, it works really well because a cast strength whiskey retains so much flavor from the barrels. 
uh, but the ABV of it, the alcohol content is can be up to like 55, 60%. That can be too strong for a lot of people. But I find it works really, really well in old fashioned because the flavor is absolutely fantastic. And when you stir it with the ice, it dilutes the drink uh, in, a, in, a, in an efficient manner. So you can still retain a lot of the flavor. Now, I am going to use a single malt whiskey. This is the Tullamore Dew 14 year old single malt. It's an incredible whiskey. It really, really is an incredible whiskey. There's an 18 year old version of this whiskey. It won uh, best single malt in the world about three years ago, I think. I actually do prefer the 14, even though it's about 100 euro cheaper. But if you do see a bottle of this, definitely, definitely pick it up. So I'm after putting in 50 milliliters and I'm going to put in 10 more. So we've got 60 milliliters of whiskey, 10 milliliters of sugar syrup, one dash of Angostura bitters, and one dash of orange bitters. Now, what I'm going to do is fill it up with ice. Now, as ridiculous as it sounds, the ice is important because you want to get a good balance to the drink. You don't want the ice to break down too much. You want an even spread of dilution. So if like good quality ice is important. Now, so I'm just going to my spoon. Now, the next thing is when you're stirring it, you want to get a nice smooth rotation on it. You don't want the ice to jump up and down because the ice will chip off and can stay in the drink. And again, it just affects the balance of it. So you have to stir it nice and slow, keep the spoon straight. Nice and easy. Nothing should be jumping around. You can see the, the whiskey content rising as the ice dilutes. Um, and you want to stir. Shane, can you just repeat the um, repeat the instructions? Not the instructions, just the measurements very quickly. I use 60 milliliters of whiskey. 60 10 milliliters. Yeah, 10 milliliters of one-to-one -one sugar syrup. So that's equal parts sugar, equal parts boiling water. And then one dash of Angostura bitters, okay. one dash of orange bitters. Boiling water. Okay. We, we've got maple syrup. Is that going to work? Maple syrup is fine. Maple syrup is absolutely fine. <laughs> would, that, would that be a Canadian, like a Canadian? Uh, <laughs> the, the, the Canadians got a lot right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> now, I'm going to strain this out because it's actually diluted enough to a level that I'm happy at. So, uh, the best way of doing it is a taste test. Because at the end of the day, you are the one drinking it. So when you're stirring it, you can just take take the spoon, little drop in the back of the hand, and just try it. And if you're happy with that con with the level of it, brilliant. That's exactly what you want. So you want to stir for around 30 seconds, nice and smooth. If you're not stirring smooth, it can take longer or shorter, depending on the dilution. Uh, I know that is a little contrary, but that's just the way it works. Sometimes, unfortunately. If the ice is breaking and chipping, it can change if it dilutes faster or sooner. But again, you don't have to stir for exactly 30 seconds and stop. Stir it for 10 or 15, try it, 10 or 15, try it. But once you're happy, because at the end of the day, this will be your drink. And that's what's most important is that you learn what you like and what you don't like. So, I mean, some people ask, should you take whiskey or with ice or water? And to be honest, it's whatever you like. Never let anyone tell you how you drink your whiskey or anything. It's all about personal preference. And that's the only right answer when it comes to your own drinks. Can you turn the sound up on your phone? Okay. Now, so we've got the ice in here. Now, you'll see a lot of places have started doing ice balls and ice blocks, and they look amazing. They really do. But I can just find it's a little awkward to drink with, if that makes sense, because you're trying to take a nice slow drink of your old fashioned, and next thing a big ice cube hits you in your face. So I do like just the classic. Now, we have our orange peel here, and Inside the orange skin, you have uh, these lovely oils, and they can create a really nice aromatic around the drink. So every time you're drinking it, you get this burst of freshness, and then a hit of whiskey, and it works really, really well. And that's why you'll often see people squeezing it. When you peel the orange, you'll see here, it's there's no pith. There's nothing white on it. You want to take all that off, because that's really bitter and can really change the dynamic of the drink. So like, get a knife and like slowly carefully scrape away if you do have any um pith left on it if you don't feel it close enough so i'm just going to pop that 
going to get the oils out and just wake up the orange and then rub the orange along the side of the glass. So every angle you drink it out of, you do get that little taste of orange. And then a nice simple twist and just rest along the ice nice and gently. And then you have the old fashioned. Now, is there any questions? Good help. <laughs> Is everyone, oh, are you going to drink it? Has everyone got their old fashioned? Oh, no one's stirred fine. Hang on. uh, sorry, I see someone Maker's Mark or Palmer's. I go Maker's Mark if I have to choose one of those bourbons. I prefer Irish whiskey in an old fashioned because I think bourbon can sometimes be too sweet, whereas an Irish single malt has has a punch on it. Like, um, so that's why an old fashioned can be quite a sweet drink. So I think the Irish whiskey goes really well in it because. It doesn't have that level of sweetness and it works better with the orange. Don't get me wrong, I love a bourbon old fashioned. I love a rye old fashioned. Uh, I'm a huge fan of bourbon, but I just, a nice single malt old fashioned is just fantastic. And same with Casper whiskey as well. Oh, that was delicious. I've got a lot of uh, instruction in the chat row, but how much is a milliliter? Um, <laughs> I mean, is that, is, that like, is that like uh, uh, ten, is that one like ounce? Generally, generous four. One ounce is thirty milliliters. Correct. So an ounce is thirty milliliters. So it'd be a third 30? of an ounce. Thirty. Thirty. Uh, yeah, three zero. <laughs> Thirty-three and a third. <laughs> Son, you need to come to Texas. You'd fit right in. Would you believe my girlfriend, is, my girlfriend is from Texas, believe it or not. She's from Georgetown, just outside Austin. Yeah. Well, that's that's approaching Austin, so that's not really Texas, but... That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, she says the same thing about the west of Texas. <laughs> People's Republic of Austin. <laughs> oh, that's exactly it. All right. Uh, so, is there any questions on how I did the old fashioned? Well, we did it in a completely different way, but it's still I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Did you, I just took the uh, um, the whiskey, the whiskey in, put yeah. in the Angostura bitters, the orange uh, bitters, uh, ice, and the sugar. What? Sugar, no sugar yet. How much sugar? Oh, sorry, the sugar uh, syrup. Yeah, a little bit of sugar. I did, yes. Simple syrup, yeah. Perfect. So you want to stir it really slowly and gently, really slow, really deliberately, because you want the ice to dilute naturally from the, the motion of stirring, because it will naturally heat up itself as it circulates in the glass. So you don't want is there, to... Is that, is, is that the motion or emotion? <laughs> well, you need, it's motion before and after you have a couple, then you become emotional. So that's how it works. You know, the scariest thing about this is that I think there are more people in this session than any other session today. And second, <laughs> everyone's paying really close attention, which is a first. That's pretty good, actually. Matt, you did a really good uh, uh, marketing campaign for, for this event, so oh, this is why uh, so is many not. people are here. Hello, Massa. I'd like, I'd like to introduce Massa. She's, uh, Hi. hello, a prospective member that's joining, joined us from Slovenia. Hi, everyone. Welcome, Massa. Hi there. Hey, Massa. Welcome, Massa. <laughs> I think she says she, 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 she raided her husband's uh, liquor cabinet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I agree with you. Matthew did a great job. But the question is, does Matthew has have alcohol in his drink? Yeah, we didn't forget the alcohol this time. <laughs> yeah, we not, not, okay. It's only got whiskey in it this time. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, you have to tell okay. everybody just what a bunch of drinking fools a lot of us SIORs are. That's why we want to be on this. Hey, Dennis, this, this is ball. Europe. This is Europe. <laughs> When I said uh, on the round table that uh, I'm not going to drink coffee because it's uh, basically 11 in the evening, 
right uh, approaching right now. Uh, Paul said, uh, and I said I don't have a problem with the whiskey part. And Paul said that I was perfect for SIOR. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. Right. Nothing Paul to knows, add. Paul, Paul's a very smart man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Okay, what's the next one, Jane? Max, you still haven't told us what your drink is like. How did no, that? No, it's fantastic. Like? No, it's really good. I love old fashioned, as uh, some of you might know. Uh, it's meant to be a sweet. No, so what I'm going to do next is has there's a has anyone ever heard of a gin basil smash? Yes. So I'm going to do that type of drink, but instead of gin, I'm going to use puchin. Um, so it's puchin in Irish, uh, in English, and in Irish it's puchin. So this is traditionally Irish moonshine. It's called. It goes back a hundred years. Uh, it's distilled in a manner similar to vodka. It's a single grain uh, distilled spirit. Um, now, because it was made uh, going back years, they used to use whatever they get to get their hands on. Like it was really illegal and people used to go blind from it. It was really, it was a good home cure for arthritis. What you do is you get the putchy and you'd rub it on your joints. You'd have it at funerals or at weddings. It's it's if you go outside of the city down to the country, most people have a bottle of putchine in the back in the back of the press. Uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was in 2014, 2015, I think, um, it was actually regulated and legalized officially um, because it was classed as something that's really important to Irish culture. So this putchine I'm going to use is called Mickel. Uh, it's named, it's from Galway, the west of Ireland, and it's named after a, a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Michal O'Grealish. Uh, he was a putching maker in the west of Ireland, just outside Roundstone. And the recipe was handed down to son after son, and it goes back a long time. And now the latest fella, Pork, he started distilling it officially, regulated, and he's selling it. And he's using the same method that his grandfather and his grandfather's grandfather used to use. Now, what putching used to be made of a lot of time was actually potato, because obviously potato was a grain that there was loads in Ireland, apart from a couple of years in between, but we don't talk about that too much. So, but this one is actually made from bog bean. Uh, bog bean is similar to water lily. Uh, so it's something you find in swamps and lakes, and there was loads of it in the west of Ireland. The most defining thing about putching is it's a really herbaceous spirit. Like, I mean, it, the smell of it would knock your socks off. I mean, this is only 46%, which isn't that much, but it, it feels like more. It packs a punch and it's got so much flavor to it. It's a really, really complicated spirit. I mean, it's it's not something that, you know, you'd, you'd crack open a bottle on a sunny day and drink around, the sun, drink around the fire with your friends or something. Like, I mean, it, it really does pack a punch and it has to be respected, but it's incredibly good if in the right circumstances so that's why i like to use it in a basil smash because obviously the the bog bean from it combined with the freshness of the basil lemon juice bit of sugar it's a really really nice drink so i mean putching is something you really have got to experience when you come to ireland there's a load of different variations of it now i go back to mickle because he's been doing this for a long time he I actually, I've, I know him, I've, I've went on training with him a couple of times and he said he's been making putching since way before it was legalized. And then when it became legalized, that's when he decided to actually do it properly and he left his job as a school teacher. So he's doing really, really well. So, Jane, again, Jane, Jane can I just yeah. look? Your camera is, is being held by Luca. That's it. Sorry, yeah. I've got two cameras. I'm looking at this one. The other one's not so good quality, so uh, we're not. Yeah, right, perfect. I'm going to look at Luca. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, all right, so I've got my fresh basil here. Ah, um, basil? Now, I'm already after washing this, but with basil, you should always wash it before you do anything with it because it generally comes on for shipping containers. So what you want is about 10 leaves of fresh basil. Um, now, basil is quite a strong flavor. So if you don't particularly like basil, you could use mint you could use a bit of rosemary maybe and uh, there's a load of different ways of doing it so just once you have a herb spirit a herb flavor but i like basil with this particularly but just be careful you don't use too much of it so i've got i said 10 leaves but because the leaves i have here are quite big i'm just going to use six 
And then I've got my fresh lemon juice here. Now you're meant to, traditionally with a basil smash, you should use uh, lime juice. I prefer lemon with this because it has that real strong citrusness that really just cuts through it and provides a nice balance. So always freshly squeeze lemon juice. Don't, please never buy it out of the packet. Buy a lemon juice yourself. You get, you'd be surprised how much juice out you get out of it. And then we're going to use the sugar. Um, you only want about 10 milliliters of sugar. Because you don't want it too sweet because you do want that flavor to come through from the puchine. But if you don't have any sugar in it between the lemon, the basil and the porcine, uh, it's, it's going to be really overpowering flavor wise. And then we're going to put in 50 milliliters of porcine. So how much lemon juice did you say? Uh, 15 milliliters, half an ounce. 15, half, what's half an ounce? 50 <laughs> now, so what I'm doing here is I'm just mixing this up because you want all the flavors to dilute. You want to break up the flavor from the basil. If you do want to use mint, uh, you should always speed up the mint before you put it in the glass because you want to wake up the, the smells of the mint. It wakes up to, to violence against it, really. The veins of the mint, it's, it's a strange one to explain what it, the difference it makes to a drink. So when we get all that mixed up, I'm gonna use a bit of crushed ice. So I filled up half the glass up with crushed ice and I'm just going to put in a bit more basil in between. So in a similar fashion to how you build a mojito, just to make sure that real uh, fresh herb spirit flavor comes through. Mix it up. And then just one more leaf for good measure. Now, so there's no, I don't use any mixer in it because the ice itself provides a nice dilution to it. If you wanted to use soda water or lemonade and kind of water it down a bit, you can. But I actually find the freshness of the ice really get a cold. And the style of drink that it is, uh, it's really, really nice. And then pop in a straw. Garnish it with a fresh basil leaf around the around the straw, so you get a smell of basil every time you go to take a drink. And then just a bit more crushed ice on top. And that is what I call a puchine basil smash. So I know it, it's pushing, you can't really get your heads around until you've tried it, but it, uh, it's a really, really, really good drink um, once, you, once you respect it. So, uh, so we, sorry, yeah. we've, we've missed the, uh, we, well, we haven't forgotten yet, but we, we just haven't put the pochine in yet. Oh, I, I did. How much did we put yeah, in? No, I did. Yeah, no, I, I did. I put in the 50 pochine after the sugar. You have, but we haven't. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> you scared me. You scared me. <laughs> we haven't forgotten. We just didn't know. We're, we're quite sure about the measure. That's all. So here we go. Yes. Um, is, is 50 milliliters. 50 milliliters. Is that 50 milliliters per drink or? Yes. No. I guess we need to put 150. <laughs> Very now we should just whilst we're whilst we're finishing yeah. our drink and you're all considering what uh, you're, we're going to drink next, we should just mention that um, we will have a cycle ride from Dublin to Kilkenny and back in aid of the SIOR Foundation, and we have a very very generous sponsor on this call, Michael Paul, based in Kilkenny. Michael, would you like to, um, if I, if you unmute yourself, 
If you're there, are you still there? Would you like to just uh, say what you've planned? You'll have to unmute yourself. There we go. And, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Before you start, I'm going to uh, pin you. Uh, if I can find you again, where have you gone? Uh, start talking and I'll find you. Oh, here we go, here we go. Good Bye. evening, everybody. Um, that was a wonderful lesson. I'm very thirsty after that. And do come over and enjoy the real Irish coffees here. Uh, <laughs> no nicer drink after dinner. Please. I'd like a double spittle if you really want to know. <laughs> I'll give you an occasion to spittle after. Um, as a tour out of Dublin to my home city of Kilkenny, it's about um, 75 miles, 125 kilometers. You'll be taken through a lovely countryside on the way. And when you get here, you'll be put up in a nice hotel and then you'll come around in the evening to a dinner put on by ourselves. It's going to be outdoors in a nice private garden in the middle of the city. It's a lovely wow. medieval city. You'll enjoy it. And we have a Ballymaloo trained chef cooking for you, showing you the best of Irish beef and seafood and Irish beer. And there'll be a gin reception, a good Irish gin, my own gin. God and, bless you. Um, some traditional Irish music. And um, you will really deserve some sort of top prize if you make it back to Dublin on the bike the following day. <laughs> Great. But you can take the train if Fizz you want. Cheers to that. Yeah, thank you very much. So, so whether you're whether you're a keen cyclist or, or a beginner, we will organise everything for you. There, there'll be vans carrying the luggage, uh, support vans to replace your flat tyres. Uh, we've got a nice hotel booked in the centre of Kilkenny. Kilkenny's a beautiful city, um, so you can sign up now already on uh, siureeurope.com stroke Dublin. All the information is there. That's the Look forward to meeting yeah. you all. Yeah. I'm sorry, okay. Matthew, so, how many how many milliliters is that? How many? <laughs> so the punchy. 50, 50, uh, I don't know. All right. Hundred. Thank you, Mike. Oh, great. So we're on to the Guinness. That's we've got three cans of Guinness in the fridge and three pint glasses that are chilled. Um, hey, Ma hey, Matthew. Can I ask a question? Of course. Um. I'm probably going to come in a little early to play golf. Could we still stay at the, the Conrad Dublin, even though we're already registered? Could we uh, set up uh, earlier than that, than the yes, uh, tournament? Yes, we uh, have um, an SIOR rate from the Tuesday to the Saturday, but uh, the, the Conrad will take your bookings from uh, for the weekend before, no problem. Okay, great. Thank you. We just don't have the uh, SIOR rate, though, of that weekend before. Unders understood. No problem. Yeah. Okay. So, Matthew, can I jump in here just while John mentioned golf? Go if on. That's then. okay. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 John. Very, um, very important. Yeah. So, 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 John, we we are having the inaugural Ryder Cup, uh, SIOR Ryder Cup event uh, in yeah. Dublin in July 2022. So, yeah. Team Europe is going to take on Team USA. I'm so I under, I'm understand that uh, Mr. McNeil uh, is uh, organizing the uh, the captaincy of Team USA. And uh, I'll, myself and, and some other uh, European colleagues will be representing Team Europe. So the event is going to take place on the Wednesday. Um, I'm happy to uh, facilitate some warm-up sessions for you, John, in local golf courses when you come to Dublin. So don't worry about that. But um, we're very much looking forward to uh, taking on our U.S. counterparts in the uh, inaugural uh, SIOR Ryder Cup uh, in July 2022 in Dublin. We are, we, are looking forward to be, we are looking forward to beating you. I'm not uh, sure if there's a if there's a golf equivalent of the Special Olympics, uh, but maybe the Special. I'll 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 captain the Irish, uh, the European team in the in the Special Ryder Cup. Uh, uh, Ian, you're, Ian, you're my Ian's my caddy. And I'll, Ian, I'll take yeah. I'll take on the American side. Hey James, James is James is our, uh, are the uh, is a gallery. Can a gallery come? Uh, you're my cart boy, Phil. I'm your cabana boy, Bubba. <laughs> oh, good guys. I'll have my cowboy hat and be leading my cow around. Okay, as long as you put some clothes on this time, Bill, you're welcome on the golf course. <laughs> Drag a heifer, that's all we care. 
Okay, so just just so we're clear about the dates, uh, the conference is the 13th, 14th, and 15th of July, but the SIOR Foundation ride is on the Monday and the Tuesday, so the 11th and 12th of July, and the golf day, the uh, Riders' Cup, is on the Tuesday, the 12th. It's all on the website. Go and have a look when we finish our pint of Guinness. Okay, Shane, over to you. So we're going to hey, finish. Just, Shane, just before yeah. you carry on, I just I thought when I saw that you were saying that you sometimes for your um, old fashioned you use smoke or something or other, I had yeah. bought some of that for my son, uh, which is the turf, the turf. Oh, um, yeah, the piece of the piece of whiskey. Oh, the piece, the piece. It actually worked quite well in the old fashioned. It, it does. Yeah, smoky. It, the smoky, the smoky flavour can really change the drink completely, and it does go really well in Irish whiskey. I mean, um, it's a, that's one of the biggest differences between Scotch whiskey and Irish whiskey. Um, so when you talk about it malted and unmalted barley, um, in Ireland, the Irish uh, distillers they just let the they let the, the grains dry naturally after the mash, but in Scotland they smoke it. So what they do is they set fires underneath with peat fires, and that's where you get the smokiness flavours from Scotch whiskey. And then in Connemara, they try to do it as well themselves because Connemara is home to one of the biggest bogs in the world. So there's loads of really, really good quality peat. But it works really well with the Irish whiskey because Irish whiskey is generally smoother than Scotch whiskey because it's generally aged longer. And um, Because to be Irish whiskey, it has to be aged for three years in a day. And Scotland has to be aged for two years. It was a real petty thing they did years ago. With the Irish whiskey, they wanted to be a, over a year older. So that's why Irish whiskey is three years and one day to be called Irish whiskey. It has to be matured in Ireland for three years and a day. So it's a really fascinating story about how it became. But that's why the Connemara does work really well because it does take that smokiness of peatiness mm. and then you crack it in with the smoothness of Irish whiskey and how it's distilled in age. It, 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 Connemara is a good whiskey, very good whiskey. There's a 12 year old that's really, really nice. So we actually have it here in the Connemara. So hopefully we can keep a bottle to the side for you when you come over. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to start now with the Guinness, if everyone's happy. Yep, great. Thank you very much. Carry on. Don't forget the Guinness. Uh, we, right. We've gone over time, but we, we don't have any time limit. If you've got nothing else to go to, you're very welcome to stay. Yeah, well, my boss is sitting in front of me, so I'll do whatever he tells me to. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. Um, so I know I'm enjoying this. So look, what I'm going to do is, um, one thing you need to know about Guinness is that Irish people can never agree. Um, if you, if you line up five Irish people, they'll all tell you different ways about how to get the perfect pint of Guinness. So what I'm going to do when it comes to cans, I'm going to show you the official recommended way to pour a can of Guinness. And then I'm going to show you the way that my grandfather pours a pint of Guinness, just for comparative purposes. Because it's one thing, and there's a couple of Irish people on the call, and they'll agree that you can never get two lads to agree on Guinness. It, it's a really touchy subject for us. Um, so with the cans of Guinness, you want them in the fridge for at least four hours, get them nice and cool, nice and settled. I mean, with kegs of Guinness, we'd always leave them for, you want to leave them sitting for about 72 hours because you want them to settle. Uh, Guinness here is powered with nitrous um, instead of carbon dioxide. So that's why you get that real smooth texture. But that's why you want to leave it nice and settled, nice and smooth, and be really careful when you open it because you don't want to lose that. So you can say I opened it, no fizz, no nothing. That's the way it should be because you want it to be nice and settled. I'm not sure what it's like in America, but in Ireland, we have um, these things in the cans called a widgie. It's almost like a little ping pong ball about this size or so. So you might feel it shaking. And um, there's something that was introduced to cans again a couple of years ago, and it's really changed the quality of cans. So this is the official recommended way. Cold glass, cold can. You want it about 45 degree angle, and you want to pour it nice and slow, really deliberately. You want to really take your time. Now, when you're pouring it, you should always leave the can, the Guinness, pouring onto the glass as much as possible. You shouldn't pour the Guinness into the Guinness any more than necessary. The silence, isn't that amazing? No one's talking. Cheers. Oh, everyone's on mute. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the official recommended way to pour a pint of Guinness. Now, the reason that's a little bit off the top, you can see that head rising. When that head finished, it was really small. You can see it rising. That's how you know it's going to be nice. 
The reason it's a little bit off the tops is that in Ireland, a pint is uh, 568 milliliters, whereas cans are only 500 milliliters. So that's why this is a pint glass here in the bar and then a can again. So that's why it doesn't go all the way to the top. So you'll have to forgive that. But you can see that lovely color there now. Guinness is also not black. It's not a pint of the black stuff, believe it or not. Officially, it's ruby red. It's meant to be a real dark, deep red color. So that, that surprises a lot of people. Whenever you do get a, a nice, proper local pint of Guinness and you have a look at it as it's settling, you can see that lovely redness of it. And then it settles down into the black. So that's, that's the official. That's never the official. That. Sorry, sorry, I keep cutting you off. Go again. I apologize. I never heard that. I was in Ireland and I never heard of the red, of Irish red. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'd still say a couple of pints of the black stuff. I mean, you're looking at it, it's it's dark, like it is It is black. But if you really look at it and you shine a torch yeah, up to it. Yeah, sure, it's got an amber tint in it. That's exactly it. And it has that weird, that uh, that hue, that red hue off it. So it's just a little, it's a little bit of trivia there I find interesting. So that's the official proper yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now... I'm going to show you the way that my granddad always told me to pour a pint of Guinness. I was working in bars for 10 years at a time and he was still telling me how to pour a pint of Guinness and it was really frustrating. <laughs> so he always knew best. Always knew best. So this is the way that he says you have to pour a, pint of, a can of Guinness. And to be honest, this is the way that I, I've started doing it now myself as well. So what you want to do is get the can, pint glass on top. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> now, good luck, Matthew. <laughs> now, now, if you see the difference here, see the way that's settling. You can see the different shades of color. When you, when you pour it the official way, it stay, goes very dark very quickly. But when you pour it this way, it settles almost like the way it should. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, Cheers. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Now, that's a long way from the official way. And you can see even at the top of the pints, um, this, the one from the can that I did officially, it's got nice smooth head here. Can you go up? Whereas you can see that's a little, it's more bubbles, really rough, but you leave that for a minute or two and it'll settle lovely. We've had so, an argument, Shane, in our house about this. My son, who's the Guinness drinker, uh, the youngest of the two, and he yeah. always does that with the can upside down and, and his older brothers would give out yards to him. So he was here yep. earlier making cocktails, but he's gone off with his girlfriend drinking cocktails. So, uh, but I'll tell him that uh, he's he's not all wrong according to your dad. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, and you have to prove my point there that even families are getting torn apart by this. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you can't win. You can't win. So I'd be very interested now. You should try it both ways and see which one you prefer. But like even now, you can see the head is much bigger on throwing the can in, and it's still not fully settled. It's still settling. It's still getting used to itself and being realized that it's about to be drank here now so yeah try it out see which one you prefer but shane is, is the taste not the same um see this is a complicated question because you know it's, it's all psychological guinness a lot of a lot of it is psychological guinness is all about the experience you know it, it, you know you want that nice fresh clean pint you want to be with a couple of friends or your other half you want to be nice and relaxed. So, I mean, Guinness is awfully about the experience because it's just such a smooth textured drink. I mean, there are bad pints, but like when it comes to this, when you're having a can at home, I can't tell the difference. I just can't. It, you know, it's all about what mood you're in, what you, what you enjoy, what you like. I mean, I think throwing the can in like this uh, is almost a smoother finish, if that makes sense. But when you pour it in the proper way, the Guinness tastes more like Guinness. Does that mean, I don't know if that makes any sense because obviously the boat tastes like Guinness, but I find this is smoother and this is has more of that Guinness flavor that you'd associate. So it again, it depends on your mood. Like, I mean, if, if I was to go home and have six cans of Guinness in the fridge, I might do three one way and three the other way for no reason. <laughs> so again, it's it's all about personal preference, but like you know, it's have a bit of fun with it, you know. Try different ways of pouring cans of Guinness. Fill up a glass a third of the way, then another third of the way, then another third of the way. As, as I said earlier, when you're the one drinking it, you can do whatever you want. Don't let anyone tell you how you enjoy it. So, what, so yeah. what's better, Guinness out of a can or draft? Oh, draft, draft, draft. 120%. No, 100% never. Well, cheers, yeah. everyone. Cheers, no everyone. Cheers, guys. 
Who's got no. one got a pint of Guinness at least? Hang on, let me see. Yeah, I'd love it. Who's got the Guinness? So I got four pints of Guinness here now as well. <laughs> I want to the Guinness Brewery in Dublin. It was so fresh and so delicious. Oh my lord, it was so great. I had, I it. And I, I just want to wish Slancha happy health. Oh, yeah. and better 2021, and we all look forward to welcoming you. So, bottoms up, guys. Cheers and thank you. Looking forward to Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Here, here's looking forward to seeing everybody in Dublin. In 2022, we really hope yeah. we can all make it. Absolutely. And then we're quite Absolutely. happy having a drink here. We don't have to go away. There's nothing else uh, to, um, well, I don't know. If there's anything else on today, I don't know. But anyway, not, until, not, not for another two hours, uh, Matthew, until we go to the IBG. Or until I go to bed. All right. Well, <laughs> I want you've, got to, you've got to be fresh tomorrow for your jab, Paul. No, sorry, I had my jab today. Oh, oh my today. goodness. How is, how's your arm? It's anaesthetized. Ian. Well done. Good stuff. Ian, Matthew, can I just acknowledge um, our, our some sponsors here on, on who joined us this evening? Yeah. Um, as we always do at SIOR uh, yeah. Global and Europe. So Paul McDonald has joined us from Bank of Ireland. So Paul's our platinum sponsor for Dublin in July 2022. So I know Paul was on the golf course today. So um, depending on how he got on, I'll make a determination on whether he makes the uh, European Ryder Cup team or not. And also um, <laughs> uh, Matt Moen, who's uh, from FKM. So FKM do office fit outs and Matt's a, a sponsor also of the, the Dublin conference in 2022. So Thanks, guys, and thanks for joining us this evening. Look, look forward to welcome. Yeah, thank you. Dublin. Glad to. And, and I think, I, I think thanks, thanks, Matt, and also to say, I think TSL were on. The, I, think TS, I think TSL were on the conference to see on the this call this evening. Great to see all you guys, and also to say to the Conrad, thanks for Huge helping thanks. us out on this great evening. Thanks for all yeah, your assistance. Yeah, good, yeah, good well time. Done. Well, Luke and Shane, cheers. Thanks very much, guys. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So much. Thank you. To Luca and to Shane, thank you very much. There's no, you don't have to go. We can stay here drinking. There's no hurry. It's a private. <laughs> well, what I'm doing now is I'm actually just pouring a pint of draft Guinness and I'm going to put it beside the two cans so you can see the difference. Oh, yeah. So, so can I ask so, Paul how he got on today in the golf? All joking aside. <laughs> James, I was here making a list of how many places I'm going to get return invitations to next year, okay? Nashville, Denver, Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about the golf, right? I won't. I won't be making your Ryder Cup team on the basis of today. But it was good. It was for those of you who aren't in Ireland. Today was this week is the first time we've been allowed to play golf since before Christmas. You know, so it's the first oh step in the in the in the you know the, the locking locking down of the lockup. So it was. Uh, it was good. It's good to be out. Good to be out and good to get back and get a few uh, excuses as well, you know. I need to ask a question on this Guinness deal. Do you guys actually wait for that thing to settle out before you drink it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, and if you, you all are out of your damn horrible. minds. I don't, I mean. No, 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 no. Let, I, I, I don't want to argue with a guest, but you're completely wrong here. So you, <laughs> you need to. <laughs> Just poured one the other way. Bill, Bill, anticipation is better than realization. You're speaking actually, like an old, you know, you're speaking it, like an old man. <laughs> <laughs> so just just for an example, what I'm gonna do is this pint again is I poured properly. Before you fill it up about two thirds, three quarters. And the reason that you let it settle is because it's Guinness is powered here with nitrous instead of carbon dioxide, so it rises up from down. And the reason you do it like this is because when you do the first pour and then you top it up, you get a much creamier head because it's after settling, the Guinness is after rising, and then you top it up so the head stays more consistently. Now, if I get a pint of Guinness and I just pour it like I would any other pint of lager and it's normal and just fill it up straight to the top. And don't get me wrong, there are some rare people that do prefer it this way, but... We don't English talk about people. That. English people, Shane. English. 
Uh, <laughs> the Welsh actually more than the oh, English. Very hard. <laughs> they just want so, it quicker. The Welsh just want it quicker. You look at that there now. Even the glass doesn't look as clean. It doesn't settle right. You're asking the pint to do too much work. And I'll tell you, if you do a blind taste test, a pint that's been poured and then topped up tastes way better than one that's been poured straight. Now, don't get me wrong. This will still be nicer than the two ways of pouring a can. But, 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 don't, but don't you blow the head off the top of it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is not Hey, That's a hey, James, 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 I'm going to have to come over for an educational drinking tour. Cause... Yeah, Bill, Bill, that's fine, because I don't want you to make a fool of yourself in the Conrad next year when you blow the top off a Guinness. <laughs> uh, uh, Bill, Bill, this is being recorded, so you might want to choose your words wisely. <laughs> hey. Look, we yeah, shall... There's a reason. There's a, there's a, there's a, so Texas thinks they're seceding from the U.S., by their choice, we're actually asking them to secede. Yeah. Bill is the reason why. We understand. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I should, maybe I ought to go put my Texas t-shirt on. <laughs> Tell you what, Anna, which pint do you think looks nicer? All of them. Let's see. An empty one. <laughs> Even this one here, I'm not sure if you can see in the camera, but see the way the head rises above the glass a little bit. Can we see them from the yeah. front? And then Isn't you know, the question which one does does Bill want to blow the head off of? <laughs> I don't want to know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, you know, oh my all, God! First of all, we'd be drinking them a lot quicker. Uh, Shane, is it right to say they used to say well, that so hot there. Kind of, you should be able to stand a match stick upright in the head of a good pint of Guinness? There's so many different uh, rumors and variations. The other one is the coin trick. Um, so I'll, I'll, use, I'll use a knife. So another way of saying is that when you smack the Guinness glass, if there's a real dull sound. Perfect. Like that. Perfect. Now, what's really interesting, though, when a pint, if you pour a pint and it's settling and you hit it, it's not dull. It's only dull when, when the pint is settled. It's bizarre. There's no reason for it. But yeah, there's so many different ways. Some people say you should drink it in seven sips. So you shouldn't take more than seven mouthfuls of a pint of Guinness. Some people say in your first drink, you should be able to split the E. So they get the head of the Guinness should drop right down to the E. You should always look east with your elbow up. There's, everyone has Guinness's device. <laughs> there's no right <laughs> answer. There's no right answers. Only that everyone agrees that's delicious. Here, here. Thanks, Shane. Yeah. I look forward to having them in, in tours with uh, James and the rest of the crew when you come to Ireland. But how many rings should you have in a pint of Guinness before you finish it? Seven. Seven, Seven. sips. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Seven sips. Every time you take a sip, a good mouthful, you should see exactly where... You, you finish drinking, the head should stick every time. So if you drink, it should say you should see it here. It should be very clear. And that's a sign of a good pint of Guinness. And also a good bar as well, because it means the glasses are nice and clean. If the glasses mm. if the glasses maintain the head, it means the bar is doing a good job in how they manage their, their glass washer, their glass storage, their Guinness lines, their how they maintain it. So yeah, no, it's 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 a good sign of a good pint of Guinness. Not always. Now you can have delicious pints of Guinness that just don't stick to the glass for whatever reason. You know, again, it's all about what you think. Well, you've been Shane. fantastic, Shane and Luca. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you very much. For having me. Appreciate it. Now, back, yeah. back to ending in the twenty-first century now, huh? Thank, thank you very you much. Glad yeah. that was wonderful. You've got you've got quite a few pints there to drink before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that would be very unprofessional of us, and we're going to go straight home. Yes, that's right. <laughs> what time is it right now in Dublin? Uh, it's twenty past ten. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and and the rest of us in Europe is twenty past eleven. We're different. You're just ready to start out at the bars. That's right. If, they yeah. were <laughs> if only they were open. If only if they, they were open. Yeah. yeah. That, that, would that would help. That would help too. Shane, don't throw those out. If you need any help, we can get there quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and leave, and leave slowly, and leave slowly. Get there quickly and leave slowly. Yeah.
I, I yeah. appreciate uh, your support, but no, I think I think we'll be okay. I appreciate it though. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Shane. Well done. Shane, well done. Shane, well done. Shane, Shane, we have a question. Okay, guys. Shane, Cheers, we have guys. a question. Did you deliver you? Shane, we have a question. Yeah. Yep. Where would the Galway hooker rank with a Guinness? That's a drink, by the way. It's a bar in Manhattan as well, Jimmy, I think. It's it's not even a comparison. Galway Hooker is is I wouldn't even I don't even like Galway Hooker. Never mind. I wouldn't even be in the conversation, I guess. <laughs> and and yeah. Murphy's and Murphy's big fan of Murphy's big fan of Murphy's yeah Murphy's a, the only thing is though one thing about Murphy's you have to be in Cork it's not nice anywhere in Ireland outside of Cork it's the strangest thing that's because they spit in it before they send it out of Cork <laughs> the, the Palace Bar and Fleet Street and Temple Bar they have, they have the nicest kind of Murphy's in the city but even then it's nothing compared to Cork and Beamish Beamish is terrible <laughs> there you go. So don't, don't mix your words the there, Shane. Don't, don't, don't sort of mess about on that, please. Yeah. So besides the Conrad, where's your favorite pub to drink a Guinness? Oh, Nancy, that's a great question. Yeah. That's a great question, Nancy. Are we talking <laughs> we got to plan about, our trip? Are we talking about in Ireland or in Dublin? Dublin. Dublin. Oh. Oh, this will be interesting, Shane. Let's go. Let's go around the Irish. Let's go around the Irish with this. Absolutely, good idea. Good idea. Right. I'm gonna say Kyo's on South Ann Street, but it has to be during the day, never after four o'clock. Too busy. What, what was yeah. the name again? What happens after Kyo's? Oh, oh, Nancy, hold on a second. There's a few more to go here. Okay. Yeah. Jason Ballard, who's an Englishman living in Dublin. Well, I hope my sound's working, is it? Yep. Yes, yep. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm always, I've done a huge on the upper Baggett Street, or on Baggett Street. Wait, sorry, down. sorry, Jason, it's it's called Merrion Row. It's it's two doors from my office. <laughs> oh, so, it's on Baggett Street, you're around the corner. <laughs> no, 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 it's I'll, Mary. I'll, I'll bow to your Mary yeah. knowledge. Okay. <laughs> uh, can I? Can I? Uh, Paul McDonald. Toners, which is definitely on Marion Row. No. no <laughs> <Toners>. <laughs> uh, 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 Michael Boyd. Kills South Ann Street, and um, that's in Dublin. And down the country, a little country pub called Connolly's of Dunbell, run by a famous Dublin footballer. Who's that, Michael? Um. The young lad of the Connollys. All right. Yeah. That was Finnegan. obvious, wasn't it? Connolly, yeah. Ian Finnegan. I'd have to say Donahue's for Ollie Barton beside me. Oh, you big lick um. arse, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say uh, there's a pub in, in just outside of um, Crow Park, which is our national uh, Gaelic football stadium called Gaffney's in Fairview. That is the oh, best point to get a side out. Yeah, yeah. So Nancy, you have a good selection there to visit when you come over. Okay. Well, well make it e rounds. everyone, everyone. <laughs> we can I do got that. A few we... days to work on it. And, and uh, James, James, stop twisting my arm. Stop, you, stop. You, stop. You, <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, I'm... we got our walking tour. <laughs> I'm just going to say that, Nancy. You, other than the one that James chose, you can walk to the mall for the Conrad. Good, yeah. excellent, oh, awesome. We need we need somebody to make a list of names because yeah, I know we, we just need a tour same guide. Language, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah. can yeah. make the same language. Can I? Can I just not, think the no, Bill. Not Bill, you though. need help. The rest of us, we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on a serious yeah. note, can I just can I just say one thing to all our American colleagues is just I know sometimes in the past people have talked about maybe flying through London to get to Ireland and different things. Always remember that we, we have a um, a pre clearance in Dublin into U.S. Uh, immigration. So you when you fly through Dublin or indeed through Shannon, you arrive as a domestic flight back into the states. So 
don't feel you need to go other places to get here. Fly straight into Dublin or into Shannon, okay. but Dublin obviously for the Dublin Conference. And when that you is... fly out, you will pre-clear as you get, if you've got global entry and stuff, you'll go sliding straight through it and you land as a, as a domestic into the US, which Good. post-COVID is going to be a serious thing. Obviously for our, for our, uh, our British friends, uh, post-Brexit, I suggest you take up, uh, you, you leave fairly shortly, so you'll be here in time for July next year. You'll be in the slow queue. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, Ian, joking apart, that, that, is, that is an absolutely great point to make. I mean, when, when we fly out of Dublin, um, through either Dublin, Shannon or wherever, and we fly into the US, we land straight into domestic and we're, we're straight out. So yes, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's fantastic. It really makes sense. Don't, don't come in through London. Don't come in through other places. Just come straight into Ireland and clear customs in Ireland. It just makes oh. a lot of sense. Paul, Ian, thank you so much for that. That's a great tip, and it probably should somehow get out in the ad, advertising yeah. for yeah. Yeah. SIOR should, Europe. And yeah. and also, um, from I know from Minneapolis, probably Chicago, probably New York, yeah. you've got Iceland Air, and you can jump yeah. into Iceland, hang out for a day or two, and get in. And it's two, like, three-and-a-half-hour flights, and it's a super cool way to hang out and make a little bit more of a trip of it, too. So. I think I, I think Iceland Air, and I think we've got Air. Is it Air Lingus? I believe Air Lingus. You've, Air you've Lingus. got Air Lingus. They've got directs here for many, yeah. many yeah. too. So come up, stay with me, and then we'll run to the airport, which is ten minutes from my <laughs> house, and we'll go over. So it'll be fun. That sounds yeah. really good. <laughs> but I, but Iceland has those blonde women. <laughs> we have a few. They don't have any of them in Texas. Don't, 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 don't waste too much energy in Iceland before you get here. And I, I, you know, <laughs> Yeah, you'd never dare their line dancing routine, Bill. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be married by the time I get to Dublin. <laughs> Bill, but Bill, if you're Bill. not, you will be by the time you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I got the door to my office closed. Margaret's in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, don't forget that you have to book for Dublin, huh? Don't forget. Right now? Yeah, right. Don't forget you have to book. Well, you know, I was going to ask you, you know, I booked and and when you sent my money back, you deducted four or $500. So if I book again and you don't have it, I think I'm paying for all that whiskey on your table. <laughs> <laughs> no, we refunded everything. What are you talking about? No, you took a little holding fee out of it, but that's okay, brother. I love you still. Okay, that you. was just you, Bill. That was yeah. just a special yeah, arrangement. Yeah, yeah. Special yeah. Day. By the way, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't get it, Bill. That was just Matthew. Yeah, I was going to say, that was, <laughs> that was my 10%. Living in Switzerland. That was my 10%. Well, well, well I know the bartender, our, our bartender Matthew. will probably not approve, but this is the closest thing I had to the Irish whiskey. But it is, it is from Park City, Utah, and I just that's what I've been drinking tonight. Little High West. Good um, stuff, Aaron. Good well, stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Got yeah, a jackalope. Bill, I was, was going to say, I was going to say, Bill, that's a terrible story about. Aaron, was that from last year's ski trip? No. Yeah. I was going to say, Bill, that's a terrible story about losing four hundred dollars. But Matt, there's always a job for you in the bank if you need it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> say, can you be my? Can you be my tax attorney, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to say goodbye here from the Conrads. Uh, we really appreciate you joining thank us. Thank you so much indeed. Yeah, we really you. appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, guys. Well done, Shane. Well done, Shane. Prepare well done, Shane. yourself when I show up. I can't wait Shane. to meet you next summer. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. 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 I just okay. wanted to say hi, and this was amazing. This was really cool. Um, how do we how do we make sure our 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 host our our bartender gets gets some some? Typically, when you leave a bar with a great experience, you leave a nice tip. How do we, uh, can yeah, we, we do that? We, yeah, we, 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 we'll sort that. Aaron and and sorry, Matthew, just to jump in here, they have been so professional. Myself and Matthew um, uh, have organized this event. And uh, from when we came up with the idea to the execution tonight, they have been 100% professional. They really are top. 
and we're we're looking forward to um the next summer so i think yeah you're right there aaron maybe a whatever a, i mean a, and a little you know, i can venmo something. anybody some cash I'd Matt, love to do. matthew has four hundred dollars he can give him. <laughs> 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 yeah, a no, get Kavana, a little drunker, a so you're more generous, <laughs> would you? Yeah, can, 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 can I? Can, can, and we'll be good for a loan, so we're okay. 